Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hi. You are very welcome to our online broadcast service. I am Reverend Catherine Alda Woody, a full-time curate, and I lead the service today. In the beginning, let's be thankful, so we pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts to you and pray. We give you thanks for all you have done, especially for your Son, Jesus, our Savior for beauty in nature, your glory, and your heart, for the joy that we receive through your Son, Jesus Christ, our family and friends. Amen. Tell out my soul the greatness of the St. James and Emmanuel hosted the fourth Didsbury Pride in the grounds of Emmanuel Church. It was a fantastic day with the full range of acts on the main stage, lots of stores and the family program of events too. It was also our rector Nick's first weekend back after a three-month sabbatical and he couldn't wait to meet as many as possible as they enjoy the sunshine, music and friendship. It's lovely to welcome you here to Didsbury Pride. Thank you so much for being here. We try to go to every Pride or, or, or even to non-Pride events as well. Yeah. And what we do is, by dressing as nuns, we feel that we bring a little bit of holy queerness yeah. into proceedings. So yeah. we're here really, our mission is to spread joy and expiate guilt. That's yeah. been the sisters' mission since the 70s. Uh -huh. And what we tend to find is that we will come in, people will laugh at us, people will ask us questions, why are you dressed as a nun? And we just start conversations with people. And uh -huh. Sometimes those conversations will be fun and silly and sometimes they will get very deep and very meaningful. Yeah. And we view it as a, as a calling, a yeah. public service. Yeah. So that's why we're here, because we love what you're doing as well. I'm a councillor for Didsbury Westward, where we're sitting here today. Yeah. Uh, and I was really pleased that a few months ago we were able to join a, in partnership with Didsbury Pride uh, yeah. to provide some financial backing and support to the festival to enable it to go ahead this year. Yeah. and what a fantastic event it has been today. Yeah. I think this is going to top all previous years with more people, more stores, more events. It's got yeah. fantastic music. It's fantastic. I'm loving it. Lord Mayor yes. and your consort, you are so welcome here at Disby Thank Pride. You. Thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. What does Pride mean, mean to you? It's all about diversity. Yeah. It's all about inclusion. Yeah. And I'm all for that. This community stands firm and resilient in the face of any challenges. And we are so much stronger 
when we are together. Three, two, one, happy Pride! Yay! I mean, how does it feel knowing that this is a Pride that's organised by a church in a church? This is my fourth, I think fourth Disney Pride. Uh -huh. and, and I think it felt weird to start with, or not yeah. weird, but it certainly, it was noticeable. Um, yeah. It was unusual, it was something that sort of stood out. Uh -huh. um, and I think the first time I came here I suddenly noticed people in dog collars and yeah. good lord. Um, <laughs> good lord. <laughs> there's a protest coming. Um, no, and I, I, it was noticeable and I thought, well that's, that's fantastic. And actually I think having come here, um, well, bar one year in Covid, every year since, Yeah. It's, it's not something that stands out now. It, it, yeah. What stands out is the support, the love from all parts of the community, including yeah. the church. Um, I think that's, that's the greatest thing about Disney Pride, actually, that that doesn't stand out now, yeah. nor should it. Uh, does it feel strange being in a church who are organising a Pride? I did actually think that, but <laughs> no, why, why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? It doesn't matter what building it is, it matters who's in that building. But no, I think it's a great place to have it. I mean, this church specifically, as well as being a faith space, forms the village centre and yeah. has civic functions that go around it. And later today, for example, the anti-bleed cabinet will be being opened. Yeah. There's nothing particularly religious about an anti-bleed no. cabinet. Yeah. It, this really is the centre of the village. So I think it's a great location to have it. This must be the only pride you come to that's actually held in a church, organised by a church. It is. How does that change it for you or does it not change it for you? I think people sometimes are a little bit more surprised to see us here, yeah. interestingly. Um, but at the same time, I think it's probably our favourite pride, isn't it? Um, yeah, we've talked, we've spoken about this quite often in the house because we go to various prides. Yeah. This one has been our favourite one because it is so community based. Uh -huh. You, you, there is, you can still dance. There's music, I'm yeah. sure you can all hear in the background. But at the same time, you can stop, you can chat, you can have conversations with people. And the other thing that we come for is the jam. Well, here I am with a legend of Didsbury. Yes, Diana Leach, jam maker extraordinaire. Diana, you've got your pride hat. Yeah, well, it's Hillary's. Yes. You've got the pride flag. Correct. So you're obviously not feeling sniffy about it being a pride event. Not at all. And I'm wearing my Lizzie Legacy yeah. T-shirt. The T-shirt here. Yes. Because actually, you know what, Diana? Why did all of this start? Because of Lizzie. Because of Lizzie. Because of Lizzie. One of the, the, the verses in the Bible that really means so much to me, and we say it every time we do a wedding, is this. God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And for me, that is Christianity. Yeah. That is it, isn't it? Yeah, that's all you need. And, and, I, I, and I feel like together in this party, we're kind of living that, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I hope you found that as uplifting as I did. Didsbury Pride is such a joyful, unself-conscious event and it was so encouraging to see so many people of all ages enjoying themselves. Later in this service we will meet a young couple who were at Pride. But first we turn to today's Gospel. This reading is taken from Luke. It will be read to us by Michael, the organizer of Didsbury Pride, and it will be followed by a reflection from our team, Vicar Lisa. This is taken from Luke, chapter 16, verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple, a fine linen who feasted sumptuously every day, and at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger, what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In haste, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip me the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am ang agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, 
and Lazarus in like manner evil things, but now he is confronted here, and you are angry. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that you who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross here from here to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into the place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and their prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will be convinced if someone rises from the dead. Good morning. Our reading was the parable of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16 from verse 19. There were so many things I could say about it, but I've decided for today to just hone in on several details and to invite anyone who would like to talk about something I ignore to email me and enter into conversation about it. First, let's look at the characters in it. The main one is Lazarus, which means God has helped, and he's the one who is named while the rich man is not. We tend to hear the names of people who have held positions of power in this life, not those who have been poor and powerless. But in this parable, the one who is named was so poor that the dogs came and licked his sores. And that's an extra detail that drives home how disadvantaged he was. Because in the Hebrew Bible and the Jewish Talmud, dogs are viewed negatively and associated with uncleanliness. Next, next, let's look at the rich man and note that there's nothing to suggest that he had been unkind to Lazarus. He was probably a good, ordinary, hard-working person who hadn't been the cause of Lazarus' prob problems and maybe he even felt quite troubled to see him every day at the gate. So why does he end up on the wrong side of the chasm in the afterlife? And then there's Abraham. Lying in Abraham's bosom was a first century metaphor for being in paradise. And after the deaths of both Lazarus and the rich man, the camera zooms in on Lazarus, who is with Abraham, and the rich man, who is not, and is very thirsty. Now it's worth knowing here that the basic form of the story, which involves reversals of fortune in the afterlife, was common in folklore and popular among Jewish teachers of Jesus' day. And also that it follows a steady trend that was taking place in the intertestamental period, which was the time between the end of the Hebrew Bible and the start of the New Testament. That was a change in the way people were thinking about Hades. Hades is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Sheol, and both words are translated as hell, but Sheol originally meant a kind of pit. In Hades, Sheol was starting to be thought of as divided into two, one bit for the righteous and one for the unrighteous. That Separation gradually developed in people's thinking into the full-blown concepts of heaven and hell. But please, let's not assume that Jesus is teaching about heaven or hell. He is simply using the ideas of his culture as the context for teaching about the fact that if we don't address the problem, that some people have better access to the good life than others in this life, we're going to miss the opportunity to do what love demands of us. The urgency to love now and to do good things now, it's driven home by the fact that as Jesus is teaching, he's making his way to Jerusalem to be killed. 
If his followers don't hear it now, there won't be another opportunity. But back to the story. In the story, the rich man asks Abraham to send Lazarus to bring him water. And I think that reveals what Jesus is really trying to get at. Even though the rich man knows Lazarus by name, he still sees him as a nobody. Somebody whose role it is to run errands for other people. And I think that's the attitude that Jesus wants us to shake off. That's the stuff of status quo. Christians must not think they're better than others. They must not have the attitude that they're entitled to others' respect and service. They must not act as though poor people are there to serve them. Now, as I'm speaking, you may be thinking that the church isn't very good at this, and you would be right. When I was young, I sang the second verse of All Things Bright and Beautiful, which was written in 1895 and went like this. The rich man in his castle, the poor man at his gate, God made them high and lowly and ordered their estate. It's really difficult to turn around the juggernaut that is the status quo. Everything conspires to keep the poor poor and the rich rich. And if you and I do nothing about it now, it will soon be too late. Later there will be a great chasm between us and the opportunity that God has given us to change the world. So we need to think for ourselves and we must not blame our upbringing for our attitude. In the parable, the rich man also asks Abraham to send Lazarus to his brothers to warn them to live a good life, saying that if somebody comes back from the dead, they will listen. Was he suggesting that he should not be blamed for his attitude because it was only how their parents had taught them all to think? Anyway, he's slapped down by Abraham, who says that if his brothers won't take heed of Moses and the prophets, then not even a resurrection will convince them to sit up and listen. The resurrected Jesus visits those who follow him, not those who don't. And this resonates with my experience at school. A friend used to sneer at my little Jesus loves you stickers. And she once told me that the only thing that would make her think that Jesus might still be alive would be if an angel appeared in front of her and spoke to her. And in that moment, I knew that even if an angel did do that, she would not believe because she did not want to. She would run to her GP rather than to Jesus. You see, miracles of themselves cannot bring belief. But this life is not all that there is. And this parable is just another warning in Luke's gospel that the good things in this world can make us self-satisfied, self-indulgent and insensitive. And that we can so easily become hard-hearted to those who are in need. This need not be our story though. While there is life, there is choice. And if we choose to let Jesus speak to us today and to make use of the opportunities we've been given to love others, it will make all the difference. Amen. There is an everlasting kindness you lavished on us When the radiance of heaven came to rescue the lost you call the sheep without a shepherd to leave their distress For your streams of forgiveness and the shade of your rest And with compassion for the hurting you reached out your hand as the lame ran to meet you and the dead breathed again 
you so behind the eyes of sorrow and shed in our tears at the sigh of the weary let the children draw near what boundless love what fathomless grace you have shown us O oh god of compassion each day we We show to the world your compassion. How beautiful the feet that carry this gospel of peace to the fields of injustice and the valleys of need. To be a voice of hope and healing, to answer the cries of the hungry and helpless with the mercy of Christ. What boundless love, what fathomless grace you have shown us, O oh God of compassion. Each day we Show to the world your compassion. Lisa mentioned in her reflection how difficult it is to turn around the juggernaut that is a state's co following Lizzie Lowe's tragic death eight years ago. That is exactly what happened at St. James and Emmanuel as God challenged and began to transform our community. Ditsbury Pride is just one manifestation of that transformation. And during the day, our rector Nick met a young couple who were happy to share this importance of church hosting such an event. Can you just tell us your names? I'm Lorna. And I'm Emily. And are you two together? Yes, we've recently got engaged. We've oh, congratulations. Engaged. Thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. The church doesn't have a fantastic record of supporting mm -hmm. LGBT plus people. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to you that you that we've got pride here today? It, it just felt lovely to be so accepted and welcomed here. That oh, was, that's really cool. Yeah. I'm so pleased. Yeah. yeah? I think it's hopeful because yeah. I see so many young people here, people from the local community, people I know, yeah. all celebrating. We say that even though, generally speaking, the UK is a welcoming country, yeah. there is always pockets of discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. And the church has lagged behind. Yeah, it has. Yeah. And yeah. really feeling a church particularly making an effort to say you are not just accepted but you are welcome yeah. we are mm -hmm. proactive about welcoming you yeah. because there's so much trauma for so many of our yes, generation yes. around churches we don't feel welcomed necessarily yeah. we don't feel like we can go into these spaces yeah. even if you know we enjoy the traditions enjoy the hymns yeah. enjoy the culture yeah. it's not a space we can go into yeah. necessarily so to be to be actively proactive yes. saying you are welcome we are here for you means more than you can imagine actually do you think that having pride like here at st james and emmanuel would make you feel that it was easier to maybe like walk into a service on a Sunday? Well, you know, we were just saying, we were saying we should jump in. We should just pop in one Sunday. Yeah. We should say we'd like to come. Yeah. Yes! We <laughs> always avoided yeah. going just because, one, you don't want to, you don't want to sort of feel like you're in, interrupting people. Yes, and you don't yeah. quite sure what people say. Yeah. But there's also that, it's, it's that question of, are we not welcome and are we an intrusion? You never want to be rude to people yeah. and go into their space. Mm -hmm. Whereas when people are saying, yes, come, yeah. be welcomed, be, you know, you are welcomed at the table. It means yeah. a lot. It makes you feel like you can actually take the step because sort of passively just being like, oh, we don't actively discriminate. Yeah. That feels like discrimination because it's yeah. like, well, are we going to be safe if someone decides to say something? Yeah. Not rocking some the boat isn't quite, isn't yeah. quite good enough. It has well, to be there action. are a lot of churches. Yeah. I mean, there isn't. there are no churches that would say, you know, you're not welcome. Mm. But actually, you realise once you're through the door that there are some people are more welcome than others. Yeah, there is that feeling of 
not just that you're unwelcome, but that there is a sort of almost pity or yeah. just like... Or I, that you I, need to change. Yeah, I'm not here to be tolerated. Yeah. I'm no. not here to be tolerated. That is not acceptable. No. Like, the only acceptable form is a wholehearted welcome. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. It does yeah. genuinely mean a lot to say, like, we are here for you and we've outreached to you. We feel like there is amends to be made. Yeah. And it's not your church personally, not yourself personally, no. but for a representation of a group that has hurt you well, to say we are sorry you are welcomed we love you we celebrate you that's a lot thank you for saying that and, and part of the reason we have been on this journey since 2014 yeah. is because we lost a, a wonderful young person Lizzie, yes. Lizzie yeah and and one of the gifts that Lizzie has left us is a complete change of heart and mind mm -hmm. um, and th and in a way you know we've we have been so transformed by Lizzie yes um, and now like we have this wonderful LGBT community mm. who are not just like it's not it's like there's no difference between people it's yeah. like we're all together you know and that's I, the thing I'm a teacher um, okay. and I'm an openly gay teacher yeah and it means a lot for my students, for children who know they can come. Yeah. Just looking around seeing, I wasn't open and out, we were saying this, we'd have never yeah. felt brave enough at the age of some of the children here yeah. to, to identify that way, to understand who we were and to feel welcomed. It saves lives when children feel they are welcomed, yeah. they are seen. Um, and that they have someone to protect them. Yeah. I think in many ways, for children with a faith, for young people with a faith, the church is a protective force. And to feel like yeah. you are not protected, yeah. or that it would even condone those who love yeah. you rejecting you, that's a lot. It saves. It genuinely does save lives when they know yeah. that there is that spot. I've seen it. I've yeah. seen such a huge change, yeah. and I have no doubt that things like this have contributed to it. Yeah. And I, I think it's so admirable that with such a such a tra tragic event, um, that rather than just sort of being, oh, you know, thoughts and prayers, actually yeah. actively doing something Action, yeah. Yeah. has just meant so much. And it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, one, it's wonderful. Well, I really yeah. appreciate you expressing that. I'm mm. really glad you're here. Thank you you need to know you will always be welcome Thank you. at St. James Emmanuel. And as you say, not just tolerated, but celebrated. Thank and you. that's what Pride's about today. So. She deserves being celebrated. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and now we to need us. to work on the national church yes. so you, that we too. can marry couples who love exactly. one another. Yes. Yeah. So that would be yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> and the flag continues to give yeah. me a Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks you. a lot, guys. Now, let us turn to prayer. Our intercession today will be led by Mike, who works at Home Cafe and was also one of the musicians performing at Didsbury Pride. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for our country. As the cost of living continues to rise, we ask you to help those struggling financially. We think of those struggling to pay their energy bills or those who are worried by the price cap increase in October. We pray for those who may be unable to pay their rent in coming months. We ask you, you to intercede on their behalf. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our new government, led by Liz Truss, we pray they will act with judicious minds and compassionate hearts, in the knowledge that it is you, Lord, who they are ultimately accountable to. Likewise, we pray for all those in authority, that their power will be justified by their actions. We hold King Charles III and the royal family, especially in our hearts at this time, and pray for them in their loss. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our war-torn world, which at times seems so hopeless. We think of those in Ukraine, both Ukrainian and Russians, who have lost their lives at the behest of others. We pray especially for those children caught in the middle. We implore you, Lord, to save them. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are lost, those who are separated from you by addiction, money, power, or any other vice, or those who are lost in pain, suffering and confusion, who do not know how to find you. We ask you make yourself known to such in your grace. 
and empower us to be the instruments of your good work. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our church, we pray for our finances. We ask you help us all to contribute to what we can. Help us to be generous in donation and in time. And give courage to those who are afraid to volunteer. We pray for comfort and healing to all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit in our community. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we give thanks for Didsbury Pride and its success. Thank you that we can open up your kingdom to include as many as possible. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. Lord, help us to walk the straight and narrow path to this doorway, bringing, bringing as many people along with us as we can. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, let's finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now it's time for the collect. Merciful Father, your Son came to save us and bore our sin on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Isn't it good to be as one, living in perfect harmony, sharing the good things God has done, God has done. Oh, isn't it good to be as one, Living in perfect harmony Sharing the good things God has done God has done Oh, isn't it good to be as one Living in perfect harmony Sharing the good